Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Excel to figure out the present value of multiple cash flows that you are getting sometime into the future when the interest rate or your discount rate is known to you. Let's see this in the context of a problem. So let's suppose that you have a financial advisor and she's selling you a product, an investment, uh, from which you expect to earn $300 one year from today. $500 two years from today and then $700 three years from today. So let's suppose that the relevant discount rate is 7%. The question is how much is this stream of cash flows worth to you today? There's a second question that I'm asking as well, which is would you buy this product for $1,000? We'll tackle this problem later. Let's first talk about how much is the stream of cash flows worth to you today or what is the present value of these of these cash flows and so uh, it's useful to depict these cash flows on a timeline notice that this is the present one year from now you're going to get 300 then say two years from now 500 three years from now you're going to get 700 now one way of doing this problem which is the long way is this you say look let me figure out how much this 300 dollars is worth to me today which will which means that you will just discount this back one year $500 in order to find out how much that is worth to you today, you discount this back two years and then, then $700 you discount back three years. And so the long way of doing this would be that you say, okay, first let me discount the $300 back one year. So you'd say equal to and you invoke the present value function in Excel which basically asks you, you know, what is the rate? You say my discount rate is 7%, so you enter 0 0.07, or you can enter 7% as well. Please do not enter just seven, this is wrong. Excel will treat this as 700%, which is clearly not the case. So you wanna enter 7%, sorry, 7%. Then the number of time periods, notice that this $300 is coming to you one year from now. So NPER, number of time periods, that's one. There is no payment, so PMT stands for payment. There is no payment here. Payment in Excel is when you are getting the same cash flow repeatedly which is not happening here. You're not getting $300 repeatedly for a certain number of years. So ignore payment, ignore PMT, go past this. And then finally, what is the future value that you're getting? The future value is, well, $300, so you can enter that. And now when you enter this, you'll find that the, uh, that the present value comes out to 280.37. Uh, as you probably are aware, in Excel, if the future value is entered as a positive number, the present value will always come out as a negative number because Excel wants one to be an outflow, the other, other to be an inflow. So that's just how Excel works. Uh, if you are uncomfortable with this, if you are saying, like, why is this negative? One way you can remedy this is by taking all of this and then saying okay you know what i'm going to take all of this uh, expression and multiply it by negative one and that's really what i mean effectively that's what you're talking about you're like look uh the present value of this 300 is basically just 280 so you can ignore the negative okay so then you do the same thing for the second one which is you take equal to present value you say look my my uh interest rate is 0 0.07 uh the $500 that I'm getting is two years from now. So NPER is two. Uh, the payment, there's no payment. I'm not getting 500 repeatedly. So go past this. And then uh, future value is 500. So I do 500. I'm getting that two years out. And so this will again come out negative. What I'm going to do is again, take all of this and just for convenience, take this entire expression and multiply by negative one so that you don't feel uncomfortable. So basically, the present value of this 500 is 436. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for the 700. So I'm going to do equal to negative one multiplied by and then the present value of this 700 at an interest rate of 7%, which is given. This 700 is three years out. So NPER is going to be three. Uh, there's this is not a payment so go past that and finally seven hundred dollars is what I'm getting three years from now so you do all of this so these are the present values of these respective cash flows and so now if somebody asks you what is the present value of this entire cash flow stream you can simply say that is equal to the sum 
of all these three numbers. Now you guys sum them up because these are what these respective cash flows are worth to me today. So the present value would be 1288.50. So this is how much this cash flow stream is worth to you today. Now seems very long winded. I right? use like a bunch of calculations to do. Fortunately, there is another functionality in Excel that you can use, which makes this very, very convenient. And that is equal to the NPV functionality in Excel. Now, when you enter the NPV formula, so when you write equal to NPV and when you open the parentheses, the first thing that Excel will ask you is what is the rate, which in this case is simple. That's 0 0.07. So you're done there. But then what Excel asks you, and this is very, very important. It says, what is value one? Value one very specifically means over here, the cash flow that you are getting at the end of year one. This is very, very important. You'll see why this is important in a few minutes. But value one here stands for the cash flow that you're getting at the end of year one, which in this case is 300. So you'll go here, you click that. Now you can press a comma and then you can enter value number two, which is cash flow at the end of year two. So you can do this. You can press comma and then press 700 over here. And then you can close the parentheses. This is one way of doing it, entering values one, two, and three. Or you can just get rid of all of this. And then when the time comes to enter value one, you simply go here on value one and then highlight these cells all together. And Excel understands that these are values one, two, and three respectively. So either way is fine. When you'll press enter, lo and behold, you will get the exact same answer, which is 1288.50, which you got from the long winded method. And so you didn't need to, need to do any of this. You could have just done this. That said, now you're maybe a little bit confused. You're like, wait a minute. This is just calculating present value. I'm just calculating the present value of these cash flows. Why is it that Excel calls it net present value? I'm not netting out any investment. And you're absolutely right. It turns out that in Excel, it just so happens that what Excel calls net present value is basically a present value functionality. Uh, when you do equal to NPV and when you enter cash flows in this way, the first cash flow that you're discounting is at the end of year one and then year two, year three. So when you do this sort of a calculation, you're really what you're doing is not net present value. What you're really doing is calculating the present value of these cash flows at time period zero. Now, this may this may be a little bit uh, problematic for you because uh, when the time comes to answer a question like this, would you buy this product for a thousand dollars? What does that mean? This means that our financial advisor is saying that, look, would you spend negative one thousand dollars over here? Would you do that in order to get this guy? And now uh, if I ask you, what is the net present value? You might say, well, net present value should be net of this investment. And so if 1288.50 is the present value of these cash flows, and you're asking me, how do I calculate the net present value? Well, that you would do as follows. You'll basically take this guy right here, and then you will add this negative 1000 uh, to get the net present value of 288.50 which basically means that NPV is greater than Zeno Shree. So you should accept this investment because it's positive NPV. Now here is what most people make their mistake. When the one, one thing that you might end up doing is that you say equal to NPV and NPV asks you the rate and you do 0 0.07. But now when you press comma, you might say, well, why can't I just do this? Value one, two, three, and four. This is value one, value two, value three, value four. Why can't I just calculate NPV like this, right? It's a very fair question. And that is why I was emphasizing that, look, you cannot, you cannot do this because value one in Excel means the cash flow that you're getting at the end of year one, which means that if you enter cash flows like this, Excel will treat this negative 1000 as if it is occurring at the end of year one. It will treat the 300 as if it is occurring at the end of year two, 500 at the end of year three, 700 at the end of year four, which is clearly what's not happening here. You therefore cannot do this. This is very, very important. Even though negative $1,000 is the first value that you are inputting, 
that is not what value one means in excel value one in excel means the cash flow that you're getting at the end of year one and so that is why when you'll do this you'll get a very different answer you'll not get 288.50 you get 269.63 and that's what i'm saying is incorrect you don't want to do this the correct way of therefore so let me get rid of this the correct way of calculating npv is that you do equal to npv the first thing that you always do is that you start from the cash flow starting from year one sorry first you have to enter the rate 0 0.07 and then you first highlight all the values starting from year one at the end of year one and then you add the initial investment if that investment is given as a negative number and that's how you will calculate the net present value and so this is how you can calculate the present value and net present value of multiple cash flows in microsoft excel